Hi everyone, I am in my bathroom, which means I'm going to do another skincare routine for you. And today, it's gonna to be my skincare routine because you guys know I have melasma. You can see it very clear as day. Look at that. All of that melasma, all of that right here and my hyperpigmentation, I do a lot of stuff to try to keep it at bay. So I'm gonna share my morning skincare routine with you today. If you're new to my channel, my name is Susan Yara. I have been in the beauty industry for about two decades. I started off as a beauty editor. I now have my own skincare line, Naturium, and I love to talk about skincare, specifically skincare on this YouTube channel, but I truly love beauty in general. You know, when it comes to my own skincare routine, I don't share it too often because you guys know that I'm constantly changing things out since I'm, you know, always trying new products. I am, you know, working with my team to develop new products for Naturium. So for me, you know, sharing a skincare routine that is my own personal skincare routine can be a little bit hard. Consistency is the most important part of your skincare routine when you're specifically trying to keep, you know, something like melasma at bay and when you're trying to, you know, brighten your skin or, you know, deal with your own acne or anything that you're dealing with, you really want to be consistent with your skincare routine and the ingredients that you're using because it can take months, months and months, sometimes a year or two to really get a handle of it and that doesn't even mean that you're gonna make it go away completely it just means that you are managing it and I think that's really one of the more important things to remember if you guys have not followed my microneedling slash Cosmolon peel journey I'm about three weeks out from getting a treatment called microneedling with Cosmolon and that is basically a way to really treat your melasma and hyperpigmentation from that though I'm dealing with something that we were kind of aware could happen, and it did, and that is post-inflammatory erythema, and that just means like I'm dealing with this inflammation, this redness that is in my skin. If I'm not really careful right now, this could turn into really bad melasma and hyperpigmentation, so I could have the opposite effect that I wanted, and kind of in some ways I'm having a little bit of the opposite effect that I wanted as far as the look of my skin goes. If you touch my skin from that treatment, it feels amazing. I have like smooth porcelain skin right now and I feel like my pores are nice and clean and just looking really good. But as far as what you guys can see, I mean, let me get a little bit closer. You know, I have almost something that looks like a mask and it's bordering on being like red slash kind of like melasma. So what I use in my skincare routine right now really matters. So the reason why I point out that I'm only about three weeks post treatment is because the first couple of weeks after the treatment, I pretty much didn't use anything that was very strong on my skin. I wanted it to heal and get to a place that it was gonna be before I start to really introduce any of these you know, active ingredients or anything that could potentially irritate my skin because that's also something you gotta be aware of, right? So this is a routine I was doing before my treatment and my skin was looking really good. I just kinda wanted like a little push. And then you know, now I'm starting this routine back up. So I'm gonna show you what it is that I've been doing. And there are a few steps in here and I can see people being like, that's just way too much, but I'm gonna talk you guys through it. Before I get into these products, I do want to talk about what my goals are with this skincare routine. Essentially, my goals are, I want to lighten the dark spots, that melasma and the hyperpigmentation on my skin, but I also want to protect my skin. So those are my two main goals of this skincare routine. If you guys don't know what melasma is or hyperpigmentation, there's a little bit of a difference. Melasma is a form of hyperpigmentation, but there are lots of different reasons why somebody is prone to it. I'm more prone to it because I'm dealing with some thyroid issues. I also have been pregnant twice and stuff. So this is kind of a culmination of you know, the issues that I've dealt with that are mostly hormonal for me, but some people might experience other reasons why they get melasma. A lot of the time for women though, it is hormonal, but obviously, you know, you need to protect yourself from the sun too. So that has a lot to do with it as well. There's also hyperpigmentation, like if you've got a pimple, that is an old pimple for instance. So now I have the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So I'm just prone to pigmentation all over the place. So that's what I'm truly tackling with this skincare routine. First product that I'm going in with is called Suspera. You might notice I have not washed my face yet. I have not rinsed my face yet. I haven't done anything except put on some lip balm for you guys. The reason for that is because Suspera is supposed to be used on your face first thing in the morning before you actually wash it. You're just gonna go in with a light layer of it. So I just give myself a couple pumps 
It is not hydroquinone. It's actually meant to be an alternative to it, which is why it's great for people who deal with hyperpigmentation, especially for people out there like with melanin-rich skin tones and stuff that don't want to use hydroquinone. You can't use it long-term either. This is something that is safe to use long-term. So I think this is why dermatologists like it so much lately. The main ingredient in here is called cysteamine. Cysteamine, cysteamine. I don't have the pronunciation down completely yet, so don't come for me. But you put this light layer on and then you let it sit for about 15 minutes and then you wash it off with a cleanser. So I don't really need it on my forehead, but why not? The main focus really is on my cheek area because that's where I get the most pigmentation. So I have my light layer on. I'm gonna let it sit for 15 minutes and drink my coffee. I will say it's something you have to get used to though because it has this pretty bad smell. It's kind of like a perm on your face. I don't know if you guys have ever smelled that, but it, it's very reminiscent of my days of getting perms when I was a lot younger. <laughs> anyway, um, but it smells like that. So if you don't like that smell, you might not like drinking your coffee while you smell that way. But for me, it's I'm got, I've gotten used to it now. I'm gonna let it sit for 15 minutes, like I said, and then I'm going to come wash it off. Some information about this though, you are going to use this for 16 weeks and you have to use it daily. So it's a little bit pricey. That's my like biggest issue with it, I guess, is that it's not, you know, it's not accessible for everybody, but um, I have just started pretty much using it, so I will report back soon on the long-term effects. Anyway, I'm gonna go drink my coffee now. I'll be back in 15 minutes. All right, so 15 minutes is up. I forgot to tell you guys that when you first start using this, you could feel a little bit of a tingle. I remember feeling a tingle. I don't feel it anymore, so it went away. Like after a week of using it, I stopped feeling that. You are supposed to use a cleanser to wash this off. So you guys know I don't wanna use anything that's stripping for my skin. Sometimes I'll use like my, you know, Naturium Nice and my Cleansing Gelée. I also love this one from Sioris. This is the Cleanse Me Softly Milk Cleanser. And truly the reason why I like this is because it is just nice and creamy. So, nice and creamy and gentle. That's really what I meant to say. It almost feels like you're using like a, like a light lotion to wash your face. So I'm just gonna rub this on and I'm gonna rinse it off and I'll be back with the rest of my routine. All right, so my face is nice and clean. While it's still damp, I wanna get my next product on, but I'm gonna end up talking too much like I usually do, because first I wanna tell you about this. If you cannot get Suspera, if you don't have Suspera, if you don't plan on getting Suspera, don't want you to feel like this routine is just not going to be the routine for you. All you have to do is get a cleanser, that can help brighten your skin and exfoliate. This is by Kate Somerville. This is the Exfolicate Cleanser. It has glycolic acid in it, but it's also really gentle. So it's a good first step in the morning. You know, I, I don't always cleanse my skin in the morning, but if you want to brighten, I do like to have some type of a cleanser that will help to exfoliate your skin. And I'm all about the AHAs when it comes to treating your hyperpigmentation and your melasma specifically. I love BHAs, I love salicylic acid, but to me that is best for, you know, if you have clogged pores and stuff. But if you have melasma and hyperpigmentation, you want something like this, like the glycolic acid. All right, so the next part, which is all of my serums, this is a really big deal for this skincare routine because this is what I'm using to really treat the pigmentation that I have in my skin, that hyperpigmentation. So first I'm going in with vitamin C. You guys know, if you have been following me, I have been a lover of vitamin C for years and years and years. I am all about good, trusty vitamin Cs. This is by SkinCeuticals. It's their Floritin CF serum. If you guys are, are wondering like, what's the difference between all the different vitamin C's from SkinCeuticals, the thing that makes this one different is that it has Floritin in it. So it's a really light, liquidy, Formula. This has Floritin in it, so it really is a serum that is for people like me that have the hyperpigmentation. I could use the CE Ferulic, and I'd probably get great results from that too. So it's really just kind of like choosing a good vitamin C. This one has L-ascorbic acid in it as well. And you know, when it comes to a vitamin C, you guys know I kind of hop around and try different ones. This one is one that I've just recently gone back to. Like this is one that's probably a holy grail. It's like one of the first vitamin Cs I ever used in my skincare routine. So I trust this one, I love this one, especially now that I'm dealing with this, you know, hyperpigmentation. But you know, I would also recommend the one from my own skincare line or, you know, the CE Ferulic that SkinCeuticals sells. For people that have sensitive skin, you know, any of the vitamin C derivatives 
negatives. They're all really good for your skin. You're still trying to get that just overall brightening, but you're trying to also get the added antioxidant protection that vitamin C gives your skin in the morning. So that's the first serum that I put on. I'm going in with my next one while I'm still damp because I'm only just slightly damp now. Next up, I'm going in with this from my brand. This is Naturium Tranexamic Topical Acid 5%. So I just put a dropper full onto my palm and then I put this on right over it. People ask all the time, can you use this with your vitamin C and other ingredients and you absolutely can. All of the ingredients in here are very gentle. They play well with all of your other ingredients and stuff so they're great to layer. And it's also a hydrating serum. Tranexamic acid is a very important ingredient for people that deal with hyperpigmentation. So you wanna get it into your skincare routine and you can have it put into your prescriptions. Like if you use tretinoin, for instance, you can have a compound that has tranexamic acid in it. And you can see it just dries down really easily on my skin. You also know that I have drier skin. So for somebody that has oily skin, you might end up watching this routine and think that it's too much for you. So in that case, one of the products I would choose is this one. Going in with another ingredient that I think is amazing for anybody that has hyperpigmentation and melasma. This is Alpha Arbutin. This is also from my brand, Naturium. This is our Alpha Arbutin Serum 2%. This is also a very light hydrating serum. If you use like a hyaluronic acid serum, then this is gonna feel even lighter than what you're used to because it's so nice and light and gentle. This is a derivative of hydroquinone. So you're not going to get all the side effects that people worry about with hydroquinone. You can use this continuously. You don't have to take breaks from it like you would with hydroquinone. And it's just so much more gentle on your skin. So I think it's a really wonderful ingredient to add in. Again, if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation and melasma, it's just so easy to add into your skincare routine. I also want to point out, I just put on three different serums and it is not intense on my skin. My skin doesn't feel like I have all these products on it. And that's one of the reasons why I love serums. I feel like I can continue layering these serums and I would be getting the benefits from them and I wouldn't feel like my skin just feels you know, like too heavy, like it's too heavy on my skin. I feel like I'm just, you know, hydrating it and it's very nice. My skin just feels nice and hydrated and bouncy. And that's why I really love serums. Next up, one of my newer products. This is the Naturium Azelaic Acid Emulsion 10%. I have been working on this one for such a long time. I really love azelaic acid because it is wonderful if you have any redness in your skin, which you guys know I'm dealing with, but also it is a tyrosinase inhibitor, just like the tranexamic acid, just like the alpha arbutin. I mean, it's just another one of those ingredients that is great for hyperpigmentation. This emulsion is amazing. We worked really hard on the texture of it to make it feel just nice and light and creamy. Me. I'm putting it last because it is a little bit creamier than the other products that I was putting on. So this is going to be the last of my serums that I'm going to wear in this skincare routine. But you can see it goes on very, very nicely. We have other ingredients in here that help to brighten your skin as well, just like all of our other products. There's never just one ingredient that's doing all the work. There are definitely ingredients that are doing the heavy lifting. Like in this, it's azelaic acid. But we have other ingredients that are just amazing for your skin. There's also a plant-derived retinol alternative in here. Here. So it's really not a retinol. That's just how people refer to it. But what that means is that you're going to get, you know, just some really nice skincare benefits from it. I know a lot of people are going to mention that there is niacinamide in three of the products that I just used. And that's totally okay. Because while we have niacinamide in here at a very efficacious level, it's not at these high percentages like in our niacinamide serum where it's in there at 12%. This is niacinamide at a level that will help to support your skin barrier. So that's one of the reasons why we have it in these products. It just helps to minimize any potential irritation you might get while you are, you know, treating any kind of issues with your skin. When you are layering it like this, you also get the benefit of, you know, additional brightening for your skin. So I love niacinamide. If you really pay attention to the ingredient lists of a lot of your products, not just the Naturium ones, you'll find that niacinamide is actually commonly used in a lot of products. All right, so I have all of my brightening ingredients on. I have my vitamin C on. I have my tranexamic acid on. I have my alpha arbutin on. I have my azelaic acid on. You guys can see my skin looks great. 
it's just nice and plump and dewy. I'm gonna go in now with my moisturizer. In the morning time, especially after I've layered that many serums on my skin, I like to put on a light moisturizer. This is the Pharmacy Honey Halo. The reason why I like this is because you would think, since it's a ceramide moisturizer, that it'd be really heavy. But my favorite thing about it, you can see I'm scraping the bottom of the, of the jar at this point. What I love about it is that it's actually really light feeling on your skin. It almost feels like a gel cream, but with the ceramide. So you get that barrier support and the moisture and hydration, but it's not super heavy because I'm still gonna go in with a sunscreen as well. Mm, it's so beautiful. Hydration really does plump your skin, at least temporarily. Look how plump I look with all that hydration. So I'm gonna let this moisturizer dry down a little bit before I go in with my sunscreen, so it gives me a second to talk to you guys. Obviously, this is my personal skincare routine, and you know, you guys see me changing things out constantly. I really want to reiterate that consistency is the key for you. This is my job to try new products and stuff. If it wasn't my job, I promise I would not change things up too much. I would stick to my go-tos. I would try a few products to figure out what's working for me, and then I would stick with that. You don't have to use as many serums as I do. I know my skin, I've been using these products for a while, and I know that my skin can handle using that many serums. You guys can see it. I mean, my skin would be bright cherry red if my skin wasn't liking it, and I would feel like the irritation that it would be getting if it wasn't working for me, right? So this is a very personalized skincare routine for me. But at the same time, it is what I'm doing for my skin to help you know, really deal with my melasma. It's my biggest skin issue right now is my melasma. So I want to get it to a place where I'm happy with it and this is what I have been doing. When it comes to the ingredients that I'm using, if you are dealing with any kind of hyperpigmentation, you might not need to use every single one of these. You might get one of these serums and think this is all I needed. It makes such a huge difference and that's all. You do not have to have all of the different serums that I'm using. You might just need one. But if that's not working for you enough, then maybe you add in another one. And that's kind of why I wanted it to be separate too, is you know I wanted people to have the ability to add in more if they need to, or take it a step back if they don't need to have too much. All right, we're on to the last step of my skincare routine this morning, and this is my sunscreen. You should be using sunscreen every day. If you are dealing with melasma and hyperpigmentation, you should really be using your sunscreen every day and reapplying. But you know, for people that are you know trying to treat that, I get so many messages. You guys wouldn't believe it. How many messages I get from people that say they want to do something about their melasma or their hyperpigmentation. And then I just ask the first question, do you use sunscreen? And they're like, no, I don't use sunscreen. I wanna, I wanna get rid of it first. And they're like, I've gotten peels and all these laser treatments and all that kind of stuff. And then they're like, but I don't use the, I don't use sunscreen. And what they don't realize is all of that is exposing their skin and making it more sensitive to UV rays and the UV damage. So you have to wear your sunscreen. If there's like one product from this entire routine that I would tell you to get, it'd be sunscreen. That's it, just for everybody, hands down. That would be a complete morning skincare routine. You could splash some water on your face, throw on some sunscreen, and you would be at least doing the bare minimum. This right here, as I shake it up, you can hear that. This is from La Roche-Posay. I actually just recently started using this. This is their Anthelios 50 mineral sunscreen. It is titanium dioxide in here, which is broad spectrum, but I did wanna try this because it's so nice and light, and I tend to not love mineral sunscreen, so I wanted to see if I'll maybe like this one since it's tinted and it's fluid. And I can tell you right now, I have been liking it. So you can see it looks good. That light tint actually helps to really even out my skin tone. So even if I'm not gonna wear makeup, I do feel like these tinted sunscreens really help make my skin tone look a little bit more even, which is a bonus when you are wearing sunscreen. Might as well look your best. If you're curious about this, I am not the kind of person that's like, you have to use mineral sunscreen. But because my melasma and that erythema is a little bit more intense than usual, I've resorted back to wearing mineral sunscreen because it's less likely to cause any kind of irritation with your skin. So if you're jumping around to different sunscreens and you're feeling like they're not working well on your skin because they're irritating your skin, then that's not gonna be good for your melasma or your hyperpigmentation. So you wanna be very careful with that. I'm going to put a little bit more in my hands and then I'm gonna bring it down and let it dry down a little bit. So I'll be right back. All right, 
my sunscreen is drying down. Here's kind of what it looks like on my skin. Not bad, right? A tip, if you haven't heard me talk about this, I have been taking my powder. This one is by Tatcha, by the way. I've just started using this. And I take just a, a powder brush and I pat it around my eye area. And what I've been finding is that really helps to set my sunscreen so that it doesn't get into my eyes. I have very sensitive eyes. They get bloodshot so easily. And you know, something I found while I've been working from home mostly and not wearing as much makeup is that I was finding my eyes were just so irritated. And I realized it's because I'd be applying all this sunscreen and I wouldn't be putting on any makeup over it. And the sunscreen would then start to run into my eyes a lot and irritate it. Like sometime like an hour later, it's like, it's usually like an hour later or something. And I start to think, oh gosh, my eyes are so irritated. And it's because of that. So I started to just set my sunscreen and you can see I'm just patting the powder on around my eyes and it keeps it in place. I don't have as many issues with sunscreen irritating my eyes anymore and it was just something that simple. Just setting my sunscreen and I'm good to go. I might put on makeup, I might not, but that is my morning skincare routine. I know, who has all the time? It's actually a very fast skincare routine minus the Suspera at first, but like you guys saw, I like drink my coffee and all that kind of stuff. So it's really not that big a deal. Once you wash your face off, it's it's like bang, bang, bang. You're just putting everything on your face. It's actually a really fast skincare routine. I just talk a lot. That's why it seems like it takes longer, but it's not that long. It's really, really fast. And in normal times, that is the skincare routine that makes my skin look really nice and smooth and clear. Again, I'm three weeks post treatment, so I'm dealing with the healing that comes with skincare treatments like that. So anyway, ask me your questions if you have any. I love answering them. You can also find me on Instagram. I'm at Susan Yara. If you guys want to see any other types of videos or if you want to see my nighttime skincare routine, let me know in the comments and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.